Well, a new billion dollar space quest has just commenced by the European Space Agency. Here to tell us more about it is astrophysicist and cosmologist Brad Tucker. Brad, great to see you again. It's an exciting mission. Of first, what can you tell us? Yeah, uh, JUICE is, is quite ambitious and it's going to mark the beginning of quite a few missions we see uh, to the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. So it was, it was going to explore three moons in particular around Jupiter, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. These are three of the four largest moons of Jan uh, Jupiter. Uh, and in particular, these are quite interesting because we believe all three of them have these icy crusts with oceans underneath. So the goal that we're going to see with JUICE is to understand better what is the composition of the ice, try and map with things like radar uh, and other tools, what is the water levels and composition potentially underneath that crust, kind of imagining almost like an Antarctica environment, uh, and then some other properties of these moons, because we think moons like this, as well as a few around Saturn, are really the best places to look for habitability, that means the ability to host life. And we think very well likely that there may be some sort of life somewhere on one of these moons underneath that icy crust, because that icy crust protects it from radiation, it keeps it insulated so it's not too cold, and obviously has a lot of liquid water. So it's gonna be an exciting mission. It's just gonna take a while to get there, as you're saying. It's gonna take um, a number of orbits around the sun and gravity assist to get all the way out. Uh, reaching Jupiter in about eight years in July 2031. Eight years, wow. Now look, the largest rocket and capsule ever built, which will eventually go to the moon and then onward to Mars, is looking at its first test flight. Yes, so this is called the SpaceX Starship. This is something lots of people have been waiting on. Now Starship is, uh, this, as you said, this the what will be the biggest, most powerful rocket uh, stacked with the capsule that will be able to carry the most people that we've had into space, even more in the space shuttle. Now, the Starship out during development had a few hop tests where they went up and down. Um, they've been waiting on the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, who approves launch licenses to do all the checks and approve it. That approval has now come in in the past 48 hours or so. And so they are now looking at an early launch as early as possible, assuming the weather. That's currently scheduled for Monday night Australia time, so sometime on the 17th. If they don't reach the 17th, they have a few backup dates later in the week um, due to weather. But as you said, this is a really big step because this is going to essentially be the capsule and rocket, the capsule being that top black part, um, that will take people to the moon and what they want to eventually is go to Mars. So a lot of people are waiting, a lot of people are anxious to see it, this first test of it going into space, doing one orbit and then splashing down somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico later that day. Incredible indeed. And look, a new NASA facility designed to simulate Mars missions and living on Mars has been built. Yeah, called uh, CHAPIA, um, NASA has quite a few of these and now this is the newest. Mars Simulator. Now, when we say Mars Simulator, this isn't changing gravity or the atmosphere. This is really health and psychological experimentation. One of the keys of when eventually people go to Mars is how they will live and how for how long they will live. Um, the duration missions to Mars are going to take about three years or so, roughly eight to nine months to get there, same back in about a year or so on Mars. And so there's a lot of prepping and learning about how the astronauts are going to adapt, live and survive in one of these habitats. So they've actually built one based on the designs of what they think may be applied for Mars in the future and are going to do test runs of astronauts or simulated astronauts in these. So there will be eventually four people locked in this little capsule <laughs> or this little habitat uh, in Johnson Space Center for over a year. Um, and this is specifically designed for Mars in those long durations. There's other ones like high seas um, and, and others that are privately owned that do a little bit shorter missions. But with the Mars aspect and how long it is, these people will be simulating can people stay indoors for a year and get along? It's a very simple but important question when getting to Mars. Yeah, it's not for me, I don't think, Brad. Just <laughs> finally, a supermassive black hole has left a trail of stars 200,000 light years long. What does that mean? What can you tell me? 
So this supermassive black hole, instead of really being in the center of a galaxy, was found actually more by itself, with not a lot of galaxies around it. Now, generally, when we find supermassive black holes, they're embedded in the galaxy, and we st see stars and gas, like the animation you were just seeing, fall into the black hole. But these black holes do move, they, uh, they, they do orbit a little bit, and if they're not contained into a galaxy, they can move or spread across space. And what you're seeing is as, as this galaxy clump has kind of moved at that top right corner of that box, stars have essentially been spat out of it, leaving this trail of debris behind. So as these galaxies were forming, they were colliding and moving through it. But the black holes, as the star started to being swallowed by the black hole, the black hole essentially got spat it out and spat it out over a huge range as these galaxies evolved. So this is a really important part of understanding how galaxies come to be, because we think small galaxies come to be big ones, and we think eventually those supermassive black holes run to each other to form even bigger ones. So seeing kind of the consequence and trail of debris, so to speak, that this black hole leaves is a very big piece of understanding how just big, big, big black holes get to the sizes they are. Brad Tucker, as always, appreciate your time. Fascinating indeed. Thank you.